Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and today we are doing uh, rearranging. And this is uh, my NXL IGCSE exam series. Uh, so check out all the other videos that I've made, and also check out series one where I've done all the topics. Okay, so we are rearranging. So we want to make T the subject, which means that we need to isolate T. T is on the right hand side of the equation, so we're just going to move everything over to the left hand side. So to do that, I'm going to add D to both sides which gives me P plus D uh, is equal to AT. And we see here that the minus D and the plus D cancel on that side. So we're just left with AT. And then the inverse operation of multiplying by A is to divide by A. So we're going to divide both sides by A, like so. And this is going to give me P, P plus D divided by A is equal to T. So over here, I'll write T is equal to P plus D divided by A. And we're done. Okay, let's go on to the next question. And we need to make T the subject again. So once again, T is on the right hand side. So I'm going to move everything over to the left hand side. So in order to do that, the inverse operation of plus 8V, uh, sorry, of minus 8V is plus 8V. So we're going to do that to both sides. And this cancels the minus 8v and the plus 8v. So the left hand side we have c plus 8v. And the right hand side we have t cubed. Now the inverse operation of um, cubing is to take the cube root. So we're going to do that of both sides. So that will give us the cube root of c plus 8v is equal to t. So we say t is equal to the cube root of c plus 8v. Perfect. Just make sure that your cube root side covers the whole of the expression. Okay, uh, the third question. And once again, we will make t the subject. Um, and t, again, is on the right-hand side. Uh, now the temptation here might be to uh, divide by a half, but the same um, operation as dividing by half is times it by two. So what we're going to do is I'm going to times both sides by two. Uh, and that gives me 2s is equal to, and the right hand side, well the half times by two, that just cancels out becomes one. Uh, and that leaves us with at squared. Uh, then we're going to divide both sides by a to um, allow us to just have just the t term on its own. So we have t uh, 2s over a is equal to t squared. And then we're going to square root both sides, which is going to give us the square root of 2s over a is equal to t. So we say t is equal to the square root of 2s over a. And just make sure that that square root covers the whole fraction, both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, similar question here. Um, it says make B the subject. Now there's, there's multiple ways of doing this, uh, but as soon as I see a, a fraction in my uh, formula, then I just want to eliminate that fraction by multiplying through by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to start this one off. Uh, you could minus c first, and we'll get the same answer. Um, this is 2p. Uh, multiplying this um, term here, a half ab squared, is going to give me just ab squared. And I also have to multiply the c by 2 as well, because you're going to multiply all terms in your equation uh, by 2. Okay, now I want to make b the subject, so I need to subtract this 2c from both sides like so, uh, to give me 2p minus 2c, uh, and that's going to equal a b squared. Uh, then I want to free up that b, so I need to divide both sides by a, because uh, that's the inverse operation of timesing by a. Uh, that releases the uh, b squared. Uh, and then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which you can do like this. So this would give me that b equals the square root of 2p minus 2c 
over a. Perfect. There are equivalent ways of doing it. Like, for example, why not? Let's just do it the other way. Let's minus C first. Um, and then you're going to multiply through by 2. So you could write it like this, perhaps. And then you're going to divide through by A. Uh, so you could write it like this. Uh, and then finally, you're going to square root. So you get B is equal to the square root of 2. P minus C over A, which is the same as what we've got, just written slightly differently, but still the same equivalent answer. Okay, uh, next question, and uh, we want to make C the subject. Once again, I've got a, uh, I've got a fraction in my formulae, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply through by that denominator just to get rid of it. Um, so this is going to give me on the left hand side just the A multiplied by the Y. Uh, the right hand side we've got c divided by y times by y which are the inverse operations so we're just left with c uh, and then we've also got to apply the times by y to the final term as well which some people do forget to do um, great so now i just need to make c the subject so i just need to add uh, this term here which is 5zy to both sides like so whoops Right, add. There we go. So we get a y plus five z y is equal to c. So over here, I'll just write c is equal to a y plus five z y. And you may have done this one, and you may have you may have got this, uh, which is exactly the same, just factorized. So both are equivalent. Both are correct. Okay, now we're on to the types of questions where the uh, variable you need to make the subject occurs twice in the formula. And it's a certain trick that we have to do here. So the first thing is we've got a denominator, we want to clear that. So we're going to multiply both sides by 8 minus f. So this gives me w 8 minus f is equal to 2f plus 3 because the denominator gets cleared when you multiply through by that denominator. Next thing we're going to do is just expand the bracket. So we get 8w minus wf is equal to 2f plus 3. And then we're going to look at all the terms that have um, an f involved. And we're going to want all of these terms on one side of the equation and all of the terms that don't have an f on the other side of the equation. So these are the ones that don't have an F. Now you could move them, you could move the yellows to the left or the yellows to the right. Either way, you're going to get an equivalent answer. But uh, personally, I think moving them to the right here is better because that negative WF will turn positive, and it's nice just to have fewer negatives as possible. So I'm going to add WF to both sides, which will give me eight W. WF moves to the side and becomes positive, plus 2F plus 3. Okay, so I've got my um, uh, yellow terms on the same side, but I need to remove all of the blue terms. I need to move them to the other side now. So I'm going to subtract 3 to both sides, which gives me 8W minus 3 is equal to WF plus 2W. Um, and then comes the trick, which is just to simply factorise. Uh, so we can take the variable f outside of a bracket and that leaves me with w plus 2 when we take the f out. Um, and that allows us to divide through because the f has been multiplied by that bracket. When they're squished together it means they've been multiplied. So we can do the inverse operation of that which is to divide through by that bracket. So this will uh, give us a denominator and we're dividing through by w plus 2. And that gives me f. So over here on this line, I write f is equal to 8w minus 3 over w plus 2. Um, and just in case you went the other way, you put the yellows on the left and the blues on the right, you would still get, um, you'll get an equivalent answer. It would just be all of the signs will be reversed. So it'd be something like this. It would just have more negative signs. Um, so, <clears throat> but it's still correct. Okay, another question where the variable we're looking for, C, um, occurs uh, twice. This one's slightly harder because it takes uh, an extra step where you have to square both sides to remove the square root. 
uh, because that square root is being applied to the whole of the right hand side we can just square both sides and it will remove it from both sides or from the right hand side sorry so we have ac plus 8 over 3 plus c that's after we've squared both sides um, and then we're going to multiply both sides by the 3 plus c uh, because we want to remove that denominator there then we're going to follow the same procedure, which is to multiply out the brackets, like so. Uh, and then we just quickly uh, have a little stock check and think where of our C terms, they're there. And then all the terms that don't have the variable we're looking for, uh, we're colouring blue. Um, and in terms of the negatives, it doesn't matter which, which side you go, uh, because you're always going to get the same a number of negatives. So let's just move them all over to the left side. So. I'm going to subtract AC, so this is going to go over to this side, uh, and we're going to uh, do the inverse operation, because it's positive on the right side, so when it moves to the left side it's going to be negative. Uh, and why not, I'm going to do this in the same move as well, I'm going to move this 3P squared to the right hand side, which was positive, so now it's going to be negative. So I can write it as positive 8, negative 3P squared. Okay, um, next we can factorise, so we get p squared minus a uh, inside the bracket, and then the final step is to divide through. So that will give me c is equal to 8 minus 3 p squared over p squared minus a. Um, and once again, you may have an equivalent answer if you just moved your yellows to the uh, right and the blues to the left. Uh, the equivalent answer would just literally be um, what well, 3p squared minus 8, swap the sides over, a minus p squared. Would look something like that. Perfect. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, once again, it's one of these types of questions where you have the variable occurring twice. Um, we've got a denominator on the right hand side, so we've got to clear that. Uh, so we're going to do that by multiplying through by that denominator, and we get n squared t cubed is equal to 4d plus t cubed. Um, and then we want to make sure that all of the terms that have the variable we're looking for are on one side, and all of the terms that don't are on the other side. So the easiest way to do this is to minus t cubed from both sides, move this one over to this side. So that gives me n squared minus t cubed, sorry, n squared t cubed minus t cubed is equal to 4d. Um, and then again, when the variable occurs twice, we're going to have to factorize at some point. So now is the time. We get n squared and we get minus 1. Um, again, a lot of students make a mistake here where they just think that that t squared just vanishes. Uh, but no, of course, it has to represent uh, that t, sorry, that t cubed with something, um, and that will be, in this case, 1 inside the bracket. Okay, and then we're good to just divide through by that factor of n squared minus 1. So we get this, and then the final step, of course, is to remove the cubing by doing the cube root. Okay. Uh, so I just write it here again and making sure that the cube root side covers the whole fraction uh, like so. Uh, whoa, 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 Nelly, where's that four come from? Out of nowhere, out of nowhere. That's more like it. That's all good, yes. Okay, final one and it's a bit trickier, uh, definitely trickier this one because we've got the variable occurring twice but we've also got um, the right hand side as a fraction and then minus something. So uh, lots of people will find this tricky, I'm sure. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the same method, which is just to multiply through by the denominator. Uh, but I'm gonna be very careful because I've seen lots of students do this question. They're happy that they wanna multiply through by the denominator. They're happy that the left hand side is gonna get times by four plus C. And they're happy that multiplying by that denominator is going to clear the denominator of that fraction. But then they forget that they have to multiply the whole right-hand side by that bracket, which means I have to also multiply C by 4 plus, sorry, I have to multiply that minus 7 
by 4 plus C. So there we go. We've cleared the denominator now, so all the terms are without fraction, which makes it easier. We can multiply out our brackets, uh, simple enough. We've got C plus 3, we've got minus 28, and don't forget that that minus from the 7 applies to the C as well, so it's minus 7C. Um, so best thing now is just to collect terms on the right hand side. Um, so let's just collect them up. So we've got 3 minus 28 for the constant terms, which is minus 25. And we've got C minus 7C, which is minus 6C. Okay, um, so now we um, look at the terms that have the variable that we're looking for and the ones that don't. So I'm going to move all of the yellows to the left side because that's going to make the 6C positive and I like to have my terms positive if I can. So that's going to move over there. So the right, the left hand side um, will be uh, CG plus 6C and this blue one I don't want it on that side anymore, I want it over here. So I'm going to move it to that side and it's going to become a negative. Uh, so it'll be negative 4G. Okay, so just a little old swaparoo, lovely. Um, and now comes the time where we're going to want to uh, factorise out the C, which gives us this. And then we're going to want to divide through by that factor of eight of, of, of G plus 6. There we go. So that's all over G plus 6. And I think that is good. But just finally, you might have that written slightly differently, of course. Uh, you may have done this question and ended up with 25 plus 4G over minus G minus 6. That's equivalent. Or you may have ended up with 25 in brackets plus 4G over uh, G plus 6. Uh, yeah, they're all equivalent, so you're still at the marks. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.